Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. This video comes from a YouTuber that calls themselves Trapped in a Room 101. I think that's the name of the channel. I don't know who this person is. I don't think they show their face. And they certainly don't use a correct name. So for me, right off rip, those are red flags. If someone is trying to share what they consider to be critical or valuable information, and they don't put their name and their face next to their information, then that tells me that they perhaps, number one, are not too sure about the information that they're sharing, or number two, they're scared of something. So coming from a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar standpoint, you all, if you're watching this, know who I am, and if you don't know, you can easily find out. You put my name in, you will see my correct name, you'll see my face. Everything, every claim that I make, if it's a claim that I make, I stand next to it, and I show my face, and I can confirm and certify and validate these claims. If I say it's an opinion, it's an opinion. Then that doesn't apply. But in any case, this anonymous YouTuber uh, produced this video having to do, in the title, uh, it says, mark, okay, if you look here, it says important, question mark, or I'm sorry, exclamation point. Video one, concealed tricks and traps in quantum grammar and by Mark Pichon Christopher. They got an uppercase K there. They spelled his name wrong. So they're claiming that there are tricks and traps that are concealed in quantum grammar. So naturally, when this video was sent to me, it caused a bit of curiosity. Hmm. What exactly are they talking about? Because I've been teaching quantum grammar for five years. I know it like I know the back of my hand. What tricks could possibly be in this grammar. I mean, could I have been tricked? It's possible. And what about Marker Sean Christopher? What does he have to do with quantum grammar? Um, let's find out. Right, this is... I think my fourth or fifth attempt trying to record this video. I apologise for the sound of the vol and the volume and it's a bit tinny. I'm going to try going phone to iPad. It, it just will not, it'll only record a few minutes um, and then the rest just vanishes. Uh, I've also had um, videos removed from my uh, iPad and my phone uh, 
that was before I linked them, but now they're linked and I've had videos go missing recently, um, all of Mark, Kishon, Christopher. This video I really need to do, I don't want to do it, but I have to do it. Um, don't want to do it, but have to do it. That's interesting. For those of you that are interested in law, you, sh you will no doubt have heard of Mark Kishon Christopher and Quantum Grammar um, and there's rather a, it's, it's a it's a rather nasty trap in it um, well there's a number of them but one is is particularly nasty because he's actually doing the very same thing he's um, revealing okay so they just claim that there's some nasty traps a number of nasty traps in quantum grammar. Now, in order for someone to be able to identify a trap in something, first they have to have knowledge of the thing that they're identifying the trap in. So, for example, you can't look out over a field and say, there's a number of traps in there without having first walked through the field and certifying with first-hand knowledge where the traps are, actually walking through the field. In other words, you have to know what it is you're talking about. If you don't know or have closure on quantum grammar, then how would you know that there's something hidden in it? How would you know that there's something hidden in something that you know nothing about, right? So let's watch this video and see if we can find any evidence that the narrator has any clue of what they're talking about when it comes to quantum grammar. He's revealing the, 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 the magician's trick and, <laughs> and then he's sold the same one back out and it's just heartbreaking to watch. And I, So first things first, I'm just going to play a couple, of, hopefully you'll be able to play a couple of short clips. Um, so let's go with that one. I'll just do it as a small screen to see if that That helps. power of attorney had returned back to you already. Let me explain that again. The power of attorney that you signed when you applied for a credit card or got a credit card or went to university to school or a driving license yeah, or hired a car or any commercial transaction you made had a reinforcing power of attorney over you. Period. All of that had reverted itself post, as it were, coronavirus. Because corona is not a virus. That's your crown. The Canadian crown. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Everything that, that this guy's talking about has everything to do with the fiction and nothing to do correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar technology there's your all fiction concepts that he's talking about okay and as far as what he's talking about corona him telling you what corona is well i guess that's up to you if you choose to participate with his version of what it is um i'm not entitled to that it's an opinion all right and i'll just press play on this one Oh, big screen. Needless to say, it's like you being handed back your mortgage documents and your mortgages. They don't want to touch it anymore because you are in control of it. And they are trying to desperately get you to surrender your, mortgage, your uh, power of attorney back to them so they can make decisions on your behalf and tax you to death or vaccinate you to death. Okay, so... Do you understand what he's just said there? <clears throat> In no uncertain terms, your power of attorney has returned back to you on everything. They can't touch them anymore. The world's moved 180 degrees. Everything's shifted over to the other side. They can't, it, 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 it can't follow you in unless you do something daft, right? Now, I'm just going to, the other thing as well is, He's made it quite clear you owned everything already anyway. That was one of the biggest parts of the scam was getting you to 
take on these pledges and these loans for, for something that was already yours. So just to um, just to validate that, I'll just play a couple of these. Something that those things are already yours? Logically, ladies and gentlemen, how can someone own something that they didn't earn or create themselves? Unless it's given to them, of course, by another contract party. For me, the concept of ownership is pretty ridiculous. But I go into that in, a, in my podcast, For the Grown Quantum Grammar Shoot, and also multiple videos, my, uh, my position on ownership. Like trying to own land would be like trying to own water or own air or own human beings. Like they're my children, you know, things like that. When you really think about it from a logical perspective and an objective perspective, is just ridiculous. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, what they're talking about here is your mortgage that, that you already owned your house. Okay, I could see perhaps if you built your, your house, use the materials that you bought of your value and you built it yourself then I could see a claim of ownership. If someone sold you a house that you paid for, you didn't have to take a loan out for it, you paid for it with some sort of value, I could see it be you having a credible claim of ownership. But to say it's already yours does not make logical sense because for me personally, I don't want anything that I didn't create or that I didn't trade a value for Unless, of course, it's a gift, someone gives it to me, well, then thank you. I appreciate that. But any other type of concept in this, er in this sense does not make logical sense to me. So perhaps someone could explain it if they choose uh, and be interested in hearing their take on it. You're, you guys understand what I'm saying. You, your houses are yours. And your lands are yours, your, your babies are yours, your car is yours. But if you so I'll just go to the next one. Uh, this lady's amazing, she's loving. What she's found out about social housing is just, well, have a listen. Company's house, it's yeah. not hard to follow the money. It's not, is it? It's not hard Flip. to find out who owns yeah. your house either. You yeah, can look on your deeds. It's not hard to find out if you know if you've got a social house who owns a house. You do some of the properties we deal with, yeah. So, even a social house, <clears throat> you settle in the house, you, you know, technically, you've settled it and they put the house in your name and then trick you into paying rent. It's it's quite. Well, as Mark says, it, it is. It's quite staggering. I should play this one. What a bloody con job. It looks like you own it already. And that word is called to have and to hold. I'll just stop that there anyway. It's just basically so, you know, in his own words, he's told you that the um, the power of attorney is returned back and you owned it all along anyway, okay? I've also got more clips and uh, I don't think I'm going to play it. Basically, all the mortgages and all the credits, they're all void. They're all done fraudulently anyway. But at the end of the period, all the leases are finished. The fact that they used fraud, they're void. You know period so why why does that matter well just as when you have a credit card say you've got a, a defaulted credit card and it goes past seven years old you don't have to do anything it's done it's finished they can't you know they can't come after you for the debt at all however third-party pirates and interlopers will try and get you to acknowledge it even if it's just calling them to you know they need you to attach yourself back to that account, that debt. Um, and like Mark said in a recent video, you know, they, they need you to, to, to acknowledge it. They need you to, even if it's, oh, I'll, I'll just pay a fiver, you know. Well, you're you re, you rebound. 
that then starts the whole seven year period over again. So just think about that for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all fiction concepts that this individual is talking about. Nothing to do with quantum grammar. The purpose of me watching this is I see the word quantum grammar in the title of the video. I have not seen one frame of quantum grammar in this video. I've not heard one syllable explaining any quantum grammar mechanic. Not from the guy she's uh, critiquing, nor from the narrator herself. Nothing, no evidence of quantum grammar knowledge here in this video. It's a lot of opinion regarding legalities in the fiction system, which whether or not what the individual is saying is true or not, um, I guess that would be up to each viewer to certify or verify for themselves because the individual offers, the narrator offers no closure on what it is she's saying, no proof, no sources of what she's saying, no way for the viewer to confirm what she's saying. So, you know, caveat emptor, if, if you're going to try any of this stuff, because it does have to do with the fiction, and the fiction can modify itself like that. That's why correct sentence structure is so potent. The most potent technology is my view and position on, on the face of the earth. But again, this individual is showing no correct sentence structure performance, no evidence of knowledge, no, nothing to do with quantum grammar here so far. The mortgages are done. So why then? is Mark inviting people to pick that mortgage document back up because the death pledge can't follow you into the corona period. So again, to, to touch on this a little bit more, this individual is claiming that mortgages are done, quote unquote done. Would anybody out there watching this who has a mortgage, a fiction mortgage, would anybody out there like to test what she's saying and stop paying on your mortgage and see what happens? I'm not advising anyone to do this. I'm asking, would you like to test what she's saying? And if so, perhaps report back to us exactly what happened when you put it down and stop participating with it. This apropos of nothing. Let us know how that works out. Again, I am not telling anyone to do this. I'm asking if you would like to. And it's, and it's void. Why then is he inviting people to pick the documents up, make a complaint about them, provide details about them to annul it and to reverse it? Well, we've reversed 180 degrees. Those are his words. So what happens if you take that death pledge and you reverse that? It means it follows you. It reattaches you to it. Now, you might think, well, he's a judge, you know, that... Hang on a minute. In one of his recent videos um, with uh, some of his uh, students and tricks and traps people... There was someone with a green uh, reflection and he says, oh, have you got a banker's lamp there? He, he assumed it was a lamp and he says, oh, no, it's just a reflection. And Mark explained that that green lamp you can see on, on, the, on the picture, which is behind him in, in all his videos where he does them in the office. Anyone that displays that type of green glass desk lamp, that it's, it's basically like a flag saying, I'm, I'm a banker, I'm acting as a banker, I'm in finance. And the post office, as he said, the banks work for the post office. So you've gone to a, a man dealing in finance and uh, well, a man doing banking with the financial instruments that you've just reattached yourself to. He said recently in a video about a judge, you know, you know, oh, don't don't tell him you you know you'll charge him two two hundred fifty thousand if they mess up because. 
like the judge said to him, well, that's a, you know, that'd be okay because you're worth far more than that. How much are you worth? How much is that mortgage worth and the power of attorney? You know, and, and <laughs> he tells you the trick and then you, oh. Okay, again, these, these concepts that the narrator is, is sharing completely to do with the fiction, nothing to do with quantum grammar. As far as banking goes, every one of us is a banker, a bank banker. If you trade in value, if you save value, if you invest value, if you use value, um, you're a banker. You bank values. If you syntax a document, you're banking numerical values onto word form. Um, so I don't know <laughs> – where the individual is going with this, perhaps um, maybe they're looking at it from a fiction banking standpoint in that they feel that whoever they're talking about here is part of the fiction banking system, but that's an assumption on my part. This is a, a reaction video. It's a video of opinion. Uh, just, I'm just throwing some, th some th throwing some things out there because I don't – to sum it up very briefly, the way the, the narrator is speaking tells me that they probably have absolutely no knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar because of the way they're talking about banking, because of the way they're talking about these fiction concepts like power of attorney and things like that. It shows that they – probably have never used quantum grammar and don't know the first thing about it, which that's that's fine. But why are you putting quantum grammar in the title of your video if you don't know anything about it and don't mention anything about it? So frustrating. Um, how long have I been on for? Eight minutes. Right. Um, point number two. Uh, he, he makes a big deal about the fact he uses his full name. Well, if you think about it, you know, we have our full name used and they attach the surname and it's all normal lowercase with the capitalised first letters, but it's a fiction name because they've put a, a title on, like Mr or Mrs, any sort of title, um, and that puts it back in the fiction. So even though people think it's their normal name, it's not because of the title. Everything the narrator is speaking about is fiction. Got to make that clear. Again, everything they're talking about is fiction. When you're positioning facts using correct sentence structure, that is a completely different domain. And this individual has not said one thing about correct sentence structure. Well, what Mark hasn't told you or pointed out is that the minute you put that full colon and attach it to the birth name because it wasn't there when you were born the minute you attach that to the to your name it changes it it's no longer your birth name now she's correct there because if you create a claim in the live life using correct sentence structure communication partisan syntax grammar and you begin to position what we would call your name as a fact like, for example, my fiction birth certificate says Jason Matthew Black. Now, I didn't create that name. I did not authorize that name. That name, quite frankly, had nothing to do with me. It was attached to me by my mother. And so that is the name that people called me by my whole life. That is the name, the variant spelling of that name that's been used by the fiction system and various contracting parties to contact me all my life. When I learned correct sentence structure and I created a claim of the live life, I decided to authorize that name to be my correct name. And I positioned those two facts, Jason hyphen Matthew and Glass, as facts on my claim of the live life. Because that's the name that people are familiar with, and I wasn't going to change it 
to use a fiction term, and then create a whole host of problems for myself. And over the last five years, I have had no problem doing what I do using correct sentence structure and using that particular name, position as a fact, using correct sentence structure. I could have chosen to use a different name on my claim of the live life. I could have completely changed it to colon space hyphen turtle uh, colon tree period. I could have done that if I chose to. And then that would be the name that people would have to use if they wanted to contract with uh, correctness with me. But I didn't. In any case, that birth certificate name was not mine. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't create it. My thumbprint uh, was not on there of my own volition. I didn't authorize it. So in other words, the birth certificate and birth name has nothing to do with me other than other people's assumption that it does because my mother gave it to me. Once I turned 18, and this goes for the fiction legal system as well, it was up to me to do what I want to do as an adult to claim that name. So I could have created a claim of the live life at that point and made the name something else if I chose to, if that makes sense. It's had an addition to it. It's changed it. And even the slightest thing added to it, it then becomes similar, but not the same. If it was the same, it would be the same. Um, there we are. There's, um, and the inclusion of one is the exclusion of the other. So it's an acting name. It's, an, it's, it's a name where he's stepped out of his, his jurisdiction as man into that realm. So what she's talking about there, she said the inclusion of one is the exclusion of the other. With regards to correct sentence structure, that would mean one word, one meaning. So to have two names is not correct with correct sentence structure. In the domain of fact, one word, one meaning, one function, one congruency, closure. The realm of two. And uh, it's, it's not his birth name. It's, it's not his name as a man, it's an account name. Now here's a trespass that the narrator is committing because they're telling whoever they're talking about, they're telling them what their name is. You can't tell someone else what their name is. It's up to each individual to claim or not claim what their name is. If you allow someone to tell you what your name is, you've then given them authority over you. That's what the fiction does when they come at you with variant spelling names. They're telling you what your name is. And then when you respond back, you're agreeing to it. It's that simple. It really is very simple. Or however he wants to define it. So I just wanted to point that out. It's it, he, He's acting. He tells you, oh, I'm using my own name, my birth name. No. The minute you add the, semi, the, the full colon, it becomes a different name it's amended it's the the full colon is a symbolic representation of a title as standing now that right there certifies it for me that this individual does not have a clue about quantum grammar or what it is or what it does they appear to be speaking about this from a fiction standpoint in a fiction context uh, as so and I think um, I vaguely remember someone telling a story how they were stood next to someone in a police station and they signed a document and they put three dots um, which is uh, again a different standing and I will mention more about the standings three two and one um, in a later video because it's relevant on an uh, esoteric level right um, I'm going to stop that video there, but just to point out, there's, you know, titles in videos like this where he's saying Power of Attorney Act 1996. And remember, it's an act. It's acting. You don't, you know, you just say sod off. Um, it holds you in servitude. Irene and Mark John teach you to destroy it. But <laughs> you don't have to destroy it. it. It's returned back to you. That's it. You know, so they're, they're given... An impression you know and I heard it on a truther channel uh, recently and he's saying oh yeah we've got to you know get rid of the you know we've got to try and 
get rid of this power, you know, get our power of attorney back and all this. I'm like, it's already come back. That's why they're desperately trying to bind as many people as possible. Um, that's what this is all about. He's trying to, you know, um, he's trying to bind as many people as he can in this last run up. And with a mortgage, well, wow, that's a massive thing. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to stop that there because that's 12 minutes and I will be back shortly. Okay, so that does it. Now, there are two other parts to this video series that I did skim over. And in those two other parts, which are much longer than this one, um, again, there is no evidence of any correct sentence structure, communication, parser, syntax, knowledge performed by the narrator. They show no evidence of, ha of knowing anything about it. And the way they spoke about the... the the angle that they spoke about quantum grammar leads me to guess that they don't know anything about it. And whatever they're talking about having to do with the fiction, which everything in this video has to do with the fiction system. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a big fan of whatever works. If whatever this individual is doing and talking about works for them, blessings to them and their loved ones. Because I realize how hard it is to deal with the fiction system without basically getting incapacitated and taking on a lot of damage, okay? You really got to know what you're doing. So whatever works, you know, lots of people are successful using fiction against fiction. The difference for me is that I choose not to do that. I choose to use correct sentence structure. Because as Colin David Eichelwein Colin Miller once said, it's like taking a wrecking ball to swat a fly. And as I said, I think it's more like dropping a nuke to swat a fly. When you use it, it really has some quite amazing results and conclusions. So thanks for watching this reaction video. Remember... It's all in fun. It's never anything personal. I'm just looking for, uh, you know, grammar knowledge in videos that purport, that claim to have some sort of quantum grammar in them. And this one absolutely does not. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.